Okay, let's talk about personal space. How do you do it? Should you do it? Is it okay to do it? How do you not get hurt by it? How do you not feel neglected when you ask for space, your partner asks for space? Let's go. I've got 15 questions over here that I want to take on and help you. And I'm sure you're going to find in there something that you are struggling with or dealing with with personal space. Um, and you come out of this with greater clarity as far as what's healthy and not healthy with personal space, how to ask for it, how to do it, how to work through it. And if I miss something that you're asking about, please hit me up in the comments and let me know what you're working on. But um, let's jump into it. The first is the main question. Is this a healthy thing? Shouldn't we be together all the time? I don't think so. Um, what, the, what the exact quantities are, we're going to touch on as we talk about it. Um, but a lot of it has to do with you becoming aware of what you think, feel, need, and want. Your partner being aware of what they think, feel, need, and want. But um, couples definitely need to have their own life. You have to, not every one of your needs are going to be met by your partner. It's normal to have some hobbies and interests that you pursue with friends. Uh, for example, a lot of people during COVID suddenly found themselves on top of their partners all the time in the same house constantly, whereas it was like, all right, nine to five, I go to work. So at least we're away from each other. And I definitely think this whole idea of um, absence makes the heart grow fonder is very true. To, we need to compare and contrast in order to appreciate something. Uh, to appreciate the light, I need it to be dark. You know, To appreciate how good it feels to be around you, I need time away, do my own thing. But it's healthy and normal and natural for people to have their own interests that they pursue. Because that brings uh, new life, excitement, energy, freshness. You're reading a book. You get new ideas. You say, hey, pay, pay partner, check out what I heard. It's, it's, a, it's water that's constantly flowing is fresh and healthy. Water that's stagnant in a pond with no new water uh, fueling it starts to breed bacteria and all kinds of other things. It's a, it's a healthy thing to bring that kind of energy with you into the relationship to to be supportive, parenthetically, I will say, this happens to be a secret. So there's like an extra point. But to take interest in something that's exciting or interesting to your partner, simply because it's interesting to your partner, is an awesome, awesome measure. Like you get major bonus points for that one. Um, yes, if your partner's into rock climbing and you're into rock climbing, also, great. So you have that shared kind of interest. But like, what if your partner is into a certain hobby and you really have no interest in it whatsoever? Your partner may even feel that you're really not interested into it. I don't see that as a problem. I see that as a potential. This is a major area in which you could gain a lot of closeness because when you ask questions, when you show interest about that topic, when you do a little bit of reading and learning on your own, there's so much buy-in because you're saying, I demonstrated interest in this topic simply because you're into it. And it's an expression of my love, my affection, my care for you that I got excited about it. And so personal space is not only healthy, but it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. All right, let's go on to another one. So what does it mean if someone says, I need space? Um, I, you know, I need, I, you know, I need space. I need to be with my thoughts. I need to think. I need time with friends. Um, I think it's kind of like a check engine light um, that we have check engine lights ourselves. I feel down today. I feel anxious. I feel nervous. I feel unhappy. I feel something. Part of me is trying to get my attention like a check engine light. Check engine light doesn't have to mean that something bad or something wrong is going on. The check engine light just means, hey, a little attention is needed over here. Come check it out, you know, and see what's going on. And so I think as individually, we have these moments where part of us is trying to tell us, hey, we need a little attention. Uh, but I think also in the relationship, you feel a bit stifled, you feel a bit stuffed, you're kind of feeling itchy. Um, not so interested in the other person. It doesn't mean you hate the person. doesn't mean the thrill is gone. doesn't mean the attraction is over. It's the sign that we need a bit more space, time. We need to continue to develop our relationships. Um, we need to get fresh ideas or to continue to explore things that make us happy. Um, it could also be difficult because where the couple is only hanging out with themselves all the time, there's this huge burden that you need, need to be everything for me. And that's not possible. That's not a realistic expectation. So things feel difficult, stifled, uh, stuck, not fresh, not alive. You feel a bit of an emptiness because you're not allowing yourself to engage in certain things that are important to you. I, it, the, the, the trigger can happen where a person is dealing with uh, a certain attachment style. They don't yet feel valid enough. They're working on their own inner sense of validation. So you not, you know, it, it could be revealing of the fact that that someone is kind of a bit clingy, which is they really have to do work on learning how to validate themselves more so that their primary source of validation isn't their partner. That's going to strangle and stifle the relationship. Uh, so two things need to happen. You need to talk about it. You need to be aware of it. The other partner can be giving and around and present, but the one who's more clingy, more, more, more 
uh, uh, codependent, let's say, really needy for external validation in order to feel valid. They've got to start to do the work of tuning into feelings, building up their inner sense of worth and value so that they can stand on their own two feet, that their own, they themselves are becoming a source of validation and they're not just dependent um, on their partner in order to validate them. So that's what that means. So how do you communicate it? How do you do this without hurting feelings? Like instead of, I'm just out of here, you know? That may happen. You need to communicate about it later. But there's a lot of things in the relationship that you want to communicate in a calm moment. And this is another one of my videos where I talk about relationships need three meetings. Couples need three meetings a week. One is a date, emotional connection, fun. That's it. Another meeting is a business meeting, monies, finance, schedules, chores around the house. Okay? Or just businessy type stuff. The other one is an emotional work meeting in which you discuss the relationship itself. We're actually then working on our communication, um, our boundaries, uh, our awarenesses of each other, um, our ability to hear and understand each other. And these are great times where you can talk about, hey, um, it's okay in our relationship to call a timeout in an argument when we both are going at it and we're not getting anywhere and we don't want to hurt each other. And you set that up in advance because then it's not in the moment if I call timeout and we haven't set up in advance, you feel like I cut you out. Same thing here. We say, like, listen, from time to time, we'll just have us, we'll call it space or whatever. It just means I need some time to be with me so that I can come back to being together with you in a joyful way, in a happy way. Set it up in advance and it's far less hurtful. It's a part of understanding each other's needs and wants. Remember, you're in a relationship or you're trying to build a relationship. That means that each of you are responsible for yourselves, for bringing yourself into that relationship, which means what do I think? What do I feel? What do I need? What do I want? You have to get clarity, think about that, meditate, contemplate on it, work with it, journal about it, get some insight. And then there's got to be moments where you share and then the other person shares and you listen. And there's this exchange of ideas, things that you need and want in general, ways in which you feel in response to what they're saying and doing so they know what to do less of because it's hurtful, more of because it more because it works for you. Um, but um, there have to be these moments of you know communication and awareness and sharing with each other. Um, so that's that point. Okay, let's go on the next point. Uh, is it normal to want time alone in a relationship? It's kind of similar. Yes, that is a normal need and a want. And it's healthy for there to be an ebb and flow, high tides, low tides. You can even plan it. If you plan it in advance, on these nights I'm with my friends, so it's already in the schedule. If I have like one or two nights a week I'm with friends and we also have a date night that goes on and then we have time, we do different things, then it's already planned in the schedule. When you have a date night that's set in your schedule, you gain from that all week long. Because you know that a time's going to come when I have my partner to myself. Um, so it works. You want to schedule. So this is totally normal. Um, it, what would make it not normal? Let's look at the question a little differently. What would make it not normal is a person who's like, I need you around me constantly to be reassuring so I could feel okay about me. That's unhealthy. That needs to be worked on. That's a person whose only source of validation is external. A people pleaser, an anxious attachment style. You can be aware of it. You can be giving and sensitive and try to be the for the partner, but the partner's got to start to realize that I have to learn how to validate myself so that my needs of reassurance and validation from my partner are meetable and doable. Uh, let's move on to the next one. How do you have a good balance then between time together and personal space? Um, there's no black and white rule. A lot of times there aren't black and white rules. I think we make a mistake. We want a blog post to tell us exactly how to do it. We want one diet book to tell us how to do it. We want one workout video to tell us how to do it. Listen, the world doesn't work that way. You must be a, an active participant in life. So consume content, consume ideas, and then apply it to you. Don't be afraid to experiment with yourself. If you try out a schedule, let's say, of personal time and time together, okay, and it doesn't work, you still won. Why did you still win? Because you learn what doesn't work. Now you're in it and you're looking at it. We have negative knowledge and positive knowledge in life. And both are important. Learning what I don't like, I don't want, what doesn't work for me, and what I need to avoid is very important. Because um, then, what is it? Because very often, well, what do you want? What would work for you? Well, I don't know. That's pretty vast. It's pretty infinite. Well, if I learn what I don't want, what doesn't work for me, it narrows down the window. And now I know it's not this. So now I know to look over here to figure it out. So don't be afraid. Experiment, try it out, journal it this week. Here was the breakdown of personal time versus uh, together time. How did I feel? How did it work out? Your emotional business meeting could be a time where you check in on that. How was it for you? How was it for you? Well, I need a little bit more. Could be that you have a set schedule and that person also needs to be able to say, hey, I'm going through something. I'm feeling something. I need a little bit of time to myself. I need to think. I think part of it is realizing that when a person asks for space, it's a beautiful thing. It's a loving thing. You want your partner to be good with themselves, good with their thoughts, good with their feelings. And very often to do that, you got to go and be on your own. You got to go for a walk. 
You got to get out of the house. You got to be on your own. It's not getting away from you. It's about being with themselves. You see the difference? I'm not running away from you. I'm running to myself. I need time alone with my thoughts and feelings just to get to know what they are. I can't explain to you what I'm thinking and feeling when I'm still trying to get to know what I think and feel. You want that. That's a partner who cares about you, who is there for you, who wants to build a relationship. Give them the time and the space. See it as a loving act and not as an act against yourself. Okay, now we can move on. Um, what are some signs that you're feeling overwhelmed and need space in the relationship? Uh, we've covered it a little bit, but... Um, uh, feeling a you know, lack of interest in your partner suddenly, uh, feeling sad, empty, depressed, even though you guys are spending time together, part of you is missing. Uh, depression, sadness means something is missing. One of two things or could be both. I, there's not enough me in my life. I don't, I don't have enough time with my thoughts and my feelings just to hang out and get to know what I think and feel. Uh, we need regular time just to, to be with our thoughts and feelings. Um, a lot of the work that I do is start with a feelings chart, name the feelings you feel, get to know what they are, uh, and build from there. Uh, the other thing that could be make us sad or down or depressed could be that um, something we enjoy and love doing, a hobby, time with friends, is missing. And so I think that that, that's, that sign, one of the things to check in with there is that, am I getting enough time for me? And each person, I think as a couple, you have to say, like, we value personal time. And we're committed to people having personal time because it makes us closer, makes us more loving. It brings more love and energy and warmth into the relationship. So we support it. And to encourage each other... Get to know your own needs and just communicate. I think that throughout all of this is that you've got to, on one hand, be, build your relationship with yourself, getting aware of what you need and want, think and feel. And then you've got to communicate with your partner. I need, I want, what do you think and to share. But then to realize we're on the same page over here. I think that's a major paradigm shift is that asking for space is a positive and it's part of building the relationship. It's not a negative. And again, if that's what you're feeling, you need to check in with the fact of, am I overly leaning on my partner and needy and demanding of my partner as they are my only source of uh, reassurance, uh, emotional validation? I'm totally codependent on them. That's an anxious attachment style. It's, it's too intense. It's stifling. Uh, so that could be some of the feelings that you feel. Another way is just trial and error is that you're going to have different feelings and different thoughts at different times in the relationship. And... Let's say throughout the week you experiment with, well, what if I take time? Hey, I'm going for a walk. I'm, I'm, this week I'm going to experiment with personal time. And just randomly you're like, okay, I'm feeling something. I'm going to go for a walk around the block for two minutes. Did it help? Did it work? Ah, okay. So now I work back and I go, that was a, a, a check the engine light or a sensor on the dashboard telling me that I needed space. It was a thought. It was a feeling. It was a, somewhere in the body I was feeling something. It was certain kinds of thoughts going through my mind. I responded experimentally by taking some space. Ah, I see that that works, that relieved it. So that's one of the ways to know. We've got to experiment. We have to take ideas about everything, exercise, nutrition, relationships, everything you read, any YouTube videos that you see, take those ideas and don't be afraid to experiment because only one of two things are going to happen. Either it's going to work and you go, awesome, this is for me. It, it works for me personally because I tried it, not because the author said so. Or it's not going to work and you go, well, I'm clearer and close. I'm clear about what doesn't work, which makes me closer to realizing what does work. Because remember, negative knowledge is a big part of any growth and any process. Knowing what you don't want narrows down the window of what you do want and helps you get closer to figuring that out. How about the next question? Is How can I respect my partner's need for space while still feeling connected? And I think a big thing is, again, this point is that when we set it up in advance, we're both on the same plate, on the same page, on the, you know, we put the ideas on the table there that taking space is something healthy. It's a normal, natural part of a relationship and uh, something we value. And taking space is about getting closer. And then to do that repeatedly and again and again and again and see that theory, that commitment play itself out, that we come back closer. Space and we come back closer. Space and we come back closer. Just the, the, the th you can talk about it, but it's the actions and seeing how you feel. And you've got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. It's just like, yeah, I'm feeling a little nervous. I'm feeling a little abandoned. We come back together. You're even closer, even more, more even more excited about me because you've got time for yourself. That's got to register in your mind, in your meditating, in your journaling somewhere that, oh, this works. Granting space gets me my partner even more at some point in the future. Um, so how do you avoid feeling neglected when your partner asks for space? And I think this is the same idea. Just rephrasing a question over there. Um, but again, I'm into using a feelings chart. You need to also take ownership of that is that my partner's asking for space. We've talked about, we've discussed, and let's say you still feel neglected. Well, this is a trigger. And partners are supposed to trigger each other. They put each other face to face with feelings that they feel, feelings you brought with you into the relationship. And we talk about emotional baggage, wounds, 
an inner child issue, you brought a little kid with you into the relationship. It's a bunch of emotions that you felt long before the relationship. Nobody makes you feel anything. They put you in touch with feelings and intimate partners who are close with each other, who have the opportunity to deeply bring healing to each other because they're so close and vulnerable, but it's also very triggering. You have to expect in a relationship that a lot of your trigger points are going to come up. And yes, you're upset at your partner and you give feedback, but you got to then reflect in your own private moment and grab yourself a feelings chart. Go to Google, Google Images, go to my website, ZalmanNelson.com. Get yourself a feelings chart and take a look at what, what am I feeling in those moments. You have to own your own part. Why do I react so strongly when my partner does this or this or this, but not that and that and that? Oh, that's my own trigger. That's how my partner's actually helping me even when I get triggered. And so if you're still feeling neglected when your partner's asking for space and you've worked it all out as we've discussed up until now, that's time for you to take, take a trigger, take a, take a look at it. What am I feeling right now? Where in the body am I feeling it? What are the feeling words that are coming up for me? What unmet emotional need does it indicate? What are that collection of words? Grab five or eight words from a feelings chart. Let the feelings chart give you suggestions. You grab the ones that match and meditate on them. Ask yourself, when else have I felt these feelings? That's the million dollar question. When else have I felt this collection of feelings? And all of a sudden it's a memory of childhood and you realize this has been with you and a part of you for quite a long time. Now you're doing your own work. And your partner's asking for space has put you in touch with feelings that you need to get in touch with. Again, it's helping you grow closer, not further apart. So can taking space in a relationship actually strengthen it is the next question. I think by now it's pretty obvious because I've laid out the core points over here. But I, 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 in my work with people, I love to repeat myself. I discovered in therapy work that so much of the success in therapy depends on the client showing up, bringing examples, points, talking, discussing, gaining insights. But then it's up to you as the client to go out into the world and practice it and put it in, you know, put it into use. So I started actually doing more messaging work and emailing with clients in between the sessions so I could give support during those times. Um, but I discovered another way to be helpful and supportive is to repeat points. If I say it enough times and I tell you in advance, don't, I don't think you're dumb or stupid, it's taking longer, it's my pleasure, it's a way in which I can be helpful to you, really learning this. The point is that these ideas stick. They come, they come up in your mind in the moment that you need it. Uh, that's what the point is. And so we'll repeat it. We'll repeat it a few times. So we're halfway through here. But can taking space in a relationship actually, actually strengthen it? And the answer is absolutely. Um, that's what we've been discussing. You come back together closer. You should be mindful, though, when you've set it up in advance and you both committed and agreed that taking space is to, to get closer together. You should be mindful when you come back together. How do I feel? And you should feel close. You should feel warm. You should notice, how do I feel? My partner comes back at the end of the day. I missed you. New ideas, fresh ideas. Tell me about your experience. I'll tell you about my experience. We feel close. You should see it strengthening you. That letting go and, and you took space and then you come back and I have even more of you. You're even more connected to me for having had distance. Absence make this, makes the heart grow fonder. Seeing that should reaffirm you and really give you confidence that this, in fact, works and strengthens the relationship. Um, so how do you set boundaries around personal space without causing conflicts? Again, everything we've set up until now, but really communication. Communication is going to be really clear. Before you communicate, though, it's a great opportunity to talk about what I call feel and deal. Let's say you're starting to have certain feelings about the way in which you and your partner are doing personal space. Don't just jump in and speak and don't jump in and take action. Oh, yeah, you did this. That's it. I'm taking time for myself. No. First, feel. Always feel and deal. And this is a skill that has to be practiced because very often we ignore our feelings we brush them aside, we ignore, suppress, push them away, and we jump in right away. What should I say or do? And it's a mess because I'm trying to figure out what to say and what's the best thing to say and how to do it. And at the same time, tend to my own emotions. It's a mess. It's like a five-course meal. It's delicious, each and every part. But you throw it all together in a bowl and it's gross. Separate. Do it separate. First, be with yourself. What, do I really, uh, what am I really feeling right now uh, in this situation? And then what's best for me? What do I think, feel, need, want? Clear? Okay. Now that I've tended to my emotions, I've clear about what I need and want, my emotions, the temperature comes down. Now I can be more thoughtful, more tactical, more clear-headed about making decisions, what should I say or do? And that would be a great way to deal with um, if you are not liking the system of personal space. It's too much. It's not enough. Get clear about your thoughts, clear about your feeling, ask for time. Again, couples need three meetings. This is a great topic of conversation for the emotional business meeting. Here's what I'm feeling. What are you feeling? Let's work through it. Um, here's another question. Is it okay to have separate hobbies and interests in a relationship when we cover this? And not only is it okay, it's recommended, it's essential, it's important. You can have shared hobbies. 
Um, people can have hobbies they do totally separately. Even if it's a shared hobby, sometimes you may do it differently with different friends. It's important. It makes people happy. Um, there are certain needs in a relationship that get met outside of a relationship, like time with friends or at work. And then there's certain things that should get met in, in the relationship. Outside of a relationship is an issue where it's something important that you should be getting from your partner and you're not. And instead, then you're looking for it outside of the relationship, usually in the realm of intimacy. That's where it's a problem. But to, to have friends and support and connections and contacts outside the relationship is extremely healthy and positive. Um, and like I said, the other point is to take interest in someone's hobby that's not an interest of yours is an extremely loving act. And I'm showing interest in it simply because it's about you. And it's a great, easy way to let your partner know that, that you care about them and you're committed um, without having to say those actual words. It's like a good implied message. Okay, how do I deal with feelings of insecurity or jealousy when my partner spends time alone? So again, if, the, if, you're, if you've discussed this and set it up and you're still triggered, this is a trigger that you have to take a look at. But I think the other part of it is to make sure that you're getting, where's it coming from? You know, why do I not feel that I could take personal time? Or if my partner's taking personal time, automatically I'm getting personal time. Do I want the personal time? Do I have what to do with it? Is it part of me needing to do more emotional work? My inner child and I are not in a good relationship. And so just the thought about being alone and on my own is uncomfortable. That you got to take a look at. Because I believe that the ability to be comfortable alone on one's own without a phone, just kind of sit with my thoughts and feelings. That is a sign of emotional health and well-being. That you have a good, healthy, vibrant, emotional relationship with yourself. So take a look at that. Should you have designated alone time in a relationship and how often? Again, um, things that are important, you can schedule them. You should schedule them. I do find that if things are not scheduled, um, quite often they don't happen, which is why the three meetings should be scheduled. But you can also schedule alone time. Like every other Thursday, I'm with the guys, you know, or every other Sunday morning, I'm with my, you know, my girlfriends. Fine, no problem. Set up. It's about try, experiment, and see how it goes. And don't be afraid to fail because there's no such thing as failure. Failure is only if I don't take the time to reflect, did that work or not? It's a constant question we have to ask ourselves. Did I like that? How did I feel? Did it work for me? Yes, do more of it. No, why? And do less of it. That's on each and every one of us. And like I said before, there is no one perfect uh, diet nutrition book for everyone. There are ideas that you have to try on for size, experiment and see how it works and construct your own deep, personal, unique relationship with yourself. That's why there is no... Uh, Two relationships that are exactly the same. You've got to take points that you hear in videos like this video um, and, and impl implement it and see if it works and see if you like it and try these ideas out because only you know ultimately what really works for you, if you like it, if it felt good, if you want to do more of it. Only you know that and you've got to be willing to try and experiment. Just remember, again, it's only a mistake if you don't take the time to reflect on it. Did I like it and want to do more of it or did I not like it, not like it and I want to do less of it? That, 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 that's normal, healthy growth. Uh, to experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. Um, here's one. How can we maintain emotional intimacy while having personal space? I don't know. I'd like to hear some of your thoughts about what you've discovered about that. Um, it depends on what, what kind. Like if the person's going away for days, um, can we have a check-in at night? Um, you know, try certain things. Um, you know, d don't be afraid to, to experiment with different things and see how it works out and what your needs are. Um, if a person's going out for the night, there's a, you know, Hey, check in if you're going to be later than a certain period of time, you've got to know yourself and what you need and what you like, um, and what's doable. I think if a person's away for a longer period of time, there should be regular check-ins. But again, always remember first and foremost with a partner, it's about you and not the partner. These are opportunities to practice, to be put in touch with parts of yourself that have feelings that need your attention and to connect with them. Um, and the last one is really, it's a different way of saying it, but we've done it, but how do I support my partner's need for space without feeling rejected or hurt? You have to have your own alone time. You have to set it up in advance that both of you will take the time. And when you're triggered, you've got to use that as opportunities to really tune into yourself. I think, I think if couples uh, really take to heart that each of you are responsible for getting in touch with what you think, feel, need, and want, and then creating space to share that with your partner, and then have them share. Otherwise, you're playing mind reader, you're guessing, you're making assumptions, that's a mess. You're not communicating clearly about what you feel. You're not sharing with each other, hey, when you say and do this, I like it. When you say and do that, it hurts me. When you don't say you don't do, I like it, I don't like it. People need that feedback, otherwise they don't know what to do. But I think to get to know yourself, the idea of personal space is I've gotta to get to know myself in terms of a few things, the feelings I have, the needs and wants that I have, but also my need for personal space. 
What, what kind of need do I have? I don't think people can, can answer that question. Do you need constant personal space? No, that's an extreme. Do I need zero personal space? No. So it's somewhere between zero and somewhere between constant. And we have to start experimenting and playing around with it until we figure it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this content and it was helpful, let me know in the comments. Please click the subscribe button and punch the notification bell so that you can get more content like this when it comes out. I appreciate the support. We'll talk more soon.